Welcome. Good evening, everyone. It's great to be back here again uh, for our next session. Um, so whichever region or city from Kazakhstan you're joining us now, um, we welcome all of you. So we appreciate you joining and helping to contribute and add to this beautiful collective family of English teaching professionals that we are. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay. All right. All right. So, and we're back with our third session within our Bridge to Teaching Excellence English Teacher Development Webinar Series here through the American Corner uh, in Nur Sultan. Tonight's session, Integrating American English Resources for Effective English Language Teaching in Kazakhstan. So tonight I have brought along four terrific co-presenters that will be joining me here tonight and providing all of you with that fun, good, useful, practical application of different types of resources that you guys can use or be inspired by for your own teaching practices, okay? So for those of you that are new, joining us maybe for the first time, welcome. We're glad that you're here for those that are again, coming back again, maybe for your second or your third uh, session. That's awesome. We love you guys. Um, I'm the English Language Fellows, was mentioned. My name's August Garnsey. Um, with the U.S. Department of State's English Language Programs. You guys can feel free to reach out and contact me. I am a resource for English teaching professionals and English language learners across Kazakhstan. You can contact me via email or through my Instagram account where I advertise and promote a lot of different types of events and opportunities and things that you guys might be interested in. So uh, check out from my Instagram at august.garnsey. You can see some of the cool things that I get to do as the fellow. I have the best job in the whole world and I get to work with the greatest group of English teaching professionals around that I could possibly ask for uh, here in Kazakhstan. Now, important, important guys, the survey for participation attendance credit. Everybody wants to get their credit, yes. So everyone must complete the short survey for the certificate attendance credit. And it's gonna to be towards the end of the webinar, not right now, uh, but towards the end. And we will communicate that clearly and let you guys know when that link or the QR code is available. It's just gonna consist that survey of your name, some contact info, and just a little feedback um, about your experience here tonight, which is helpful for all of us. Again, that link will be in the chat later on, and we'll also throw a QR code up on the screen. So if you guys have that functionality on your phone, you can just scan the QR code to get access to that survey. Again, I'll be at the end. So guys, let's get into tonight's topic here, and let's just go ahead and throw down a big, huge question. Have you used American English resources or maybe participated in their professional online development opportunities before. Now this is gonna require your guys' participation right now using the chat. I prefer if you guys, if, you, if you've used the resource before and you remember the name, please try to type the name of that resource into the chat versus just a simple yes. If there was an online development opportunity or event you attended, if you remember the name, put that name into the chat, again, versus just a yes. If you don't remember the name of the resource or maybe the event that you attended online that was part or was offered through American English, then just go ahead and put a yes into the chat. Okay, so I just wanna kind of see collectively where are we at with our experience with American English online resources? Okay, let's take a look. I see the chat looks like it's blown up. I'm not sure if everyone's just saying hello, good evening, or what. All right, so I'm seeing some yeses. Yes, I'm seeing yeses. 
So yes, open British uh, British Council, I guess. Okay, all right. Okay, I see. Yes. Okay, MOOCs. Okay, yes. Some are saying though, no, it's not the first time for. Thank you for being honest. Some of you are saying a bunch, a lot of MOOCs. Okay, but some of you again are saying British Council. It looks like. Okay, all right. So some of us, yes. So it's good. So I'm seeing here that a lot of you have maybe heard of it at least, or I mean, you've tried in maybe some way, shape, or form resources from American English. Typically, when I ask this question, people think of like a variety of English, like American English, British English, Australian English you know, Russian English. <laughs> so it's not like a variety of English. It's actually like a brand, okay? So I'm going to get to that right now. Thank you, guys. Keep throwing your ideas. Again, we're trying to collectively build our, you know, our tool built, our treasure box here tonight of resources. Tonight's all about practical application, sharing our ideas. Guys, feel free to engage each other through the chat and put those ideas out there. I'm gonna go ahead and move forward and kind of start to give you a little very brief and general overview of just a few different types of places for these resources before I pass it over to my invited co-speakers. So American English, the site you can see on the screen, americanenglish.state.gov, that's your go-to spot for a plethora of resources. It's, it's endless and it's always growing. It's a part of the US Department of State's Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs. And so that's where it's created, it's managed, and it's fully supported by the US Department of State. And it is your source for online, digital, multimedia, and other printed resources for not just English language learning and not just even English language teaching, but also for professional development and also other cultural information for the US. Okay, so again, the actual website is AmericanEnglish.state.gov. Maybe, uh, Arai, can you maybe go ahead and put that link into the chat for everybody so they have that one in case they want to cruise and start looking at it here. Maybe you want to go ahead and check something out or you see something that one of the co-presenters are sharing. We'll keep throwing links into the chat for all of you for any kinds of resources that are being used tonight. Now, very simply here, um, I didn't want to spend a lot of time actually going through the site. You guys are the brilliant English language teaching professionals you are. I know you guys have a curiosity okay about things you guys love to explore stuff especially stuff that's going to make your job easier and help you to maybe save some time and make you a better professional so as you can see from the screenshot there's two circles i got a red circle and a yellow circle uh, with arrows pointing to it in the red circle the resources and programs tab you can find just a ton of stuff this is really like the main spot to find a lot of different resources whether teaching the four skills, like if you're looking for activities for speaking, maybe you're looking for short stories for reading, you can find that there, of course. If you're looking for things revolving culture, music with the US, they have resources, for instance, they got books about holidays. I know you guys like teaching holidays, music, if you're looking for songs and games, because I know that a lot of us all love to gamify our lessons to make it more engaging and fun for our learners. That's all there. Last week, I mentioned about conversation clubs and discussion groups, the English club materials you can find there. There's a huge 200 page manual for you guys. The teacher's corner, one of my favorite places for resources and ideas. Those of you that are interested potentially maybe in using or integrating comics for language learning, and also access the link to the OPEN, the Online Professional English Network. The yellow circle you can see around English Teaching Forum. Now this is the longstanding journal that has been published and printed in the old days. Now it's, it's relied upon more as a digital resource, but it's been around for decades. That's been produced by the US Department of State. 
Now, English Teaching Forum is a quarterly journal, so it's published four times a year. And basically, it's supporting the teaching of English all around the world. It's designed for a general worldwide audience, and it focuses on innovative, practical ideas. It's not a research journal. It's not really heavy in theory. It's very easy to read because it's made by English teachers for English teachers, everyday English teachers. From that tab, you can access the current issue or past issues. It's all digital. It's all free. You got 20 years of old copies of the Forum magazine there. 20 years, quarterly being published. You do the math, you got like 80 issues there. That's a lot of content for you guys to get caught up on. And if you guys are curious about maybe potentially ever submitting articles for the Forum magazine, they have a link for submissions. Me personally, one of my professional goals is to be able to co-write and co-author with an English teacher from Kazakhstan and get published in that book. I think it'd be great. It's one of my goals I hope to achieve for the next year or two. Now, kind of going forward here again, just kind of just again briefly just show you a couple more things. Onto social media, there's two sites you may have heard about. One, American English at State. Now, this is a more general site that is for English language learners around the world who are looking maybe to just interact with native English speakers and or non-native English speakers. So there's a lot of just kind of more general discussions and things about the US there. For instance, you can see an advertisement. This was from last year in February. I was interviewed by a representative there from the Department of State in Washington, DC, and our live streaming Facebook interview about the places I lived in the United States was viewed and watched live by over 10,000 people worldwide. It was quite an experience for me, but you can find cool things like that there. Now, for all of us that are English language teachers, we will probably more focused on American English for educators, okay? This is where you find stuff designed specific for English teachers. You'll find discussion forums, you'll find topics, you'll find resources, ideas, questions of the day, and also, of course, access to the live streaming webinars for the, um, the American English for Educators Live English Teacher Professional Development Webinar Series. They just finished up Series 13. There will be Series 14 coming soon. That's where you can get access to that, okay? Now, the last thing that I wanted to show you guys here was the YouTube channel. Now, hundreds of videos, just to put it simply, hundreds of videos. Now, they got a lot of playlists. There's stuff for English language learners and for English language teachers. You can see a few samples of some playlists I put onto my slide. You know, we're always looking for like these little short, like high quality video clips, things like on phrasal verbs or like idiomatic language. You know, you can find those kinds of videos there on this site, things you can just plug into your teaching practice if you want to kind of have a much more kind of supportive type of delivery of certain types of language forms or target language. You know, there's videos you can integrate there or for your own professional development, such as like using technology or classroom management, there's stuff there as well for you. And if you're looking to find past webinars that were recorded, you can find all those webinars here as well too. So a plethora of information guys for you. Um, the best way to learn, go this weekend, check it out for yourself. Okay, now that's basically what I wanted to share here um, in the beginning. Now comes the good stuff, okay? What you guys are waiting to see is practical stuff that you can use tomorrow in your lesson, because that's the way I like to talk. Not what can I use next year, but what can I use tomorrow? Um, I've invited some great co-speakers, um, and I'll kind of just explain the relationship, how I know these uh, great co-speakers, and they're going to show you and share with you their ideas of using American English resources. Now, the first invited co-speaker um, was one of my participants in one of my recent partnerships. I did a partnership with the Karaganda Education Department, and Asim was one of my participants in the program. She was fantastic and shared a lot of great ideas, and so she wants to share some of those with you tonight. So, Asim, it's going to be all yours here, okay? So, hello, everyone. 
from Karagande. My name is Etienne. I have 20 years experience of teaching English as a second language. I can speak three languages, Kazakh, Russian, of course, and English. So uh, glad to see you here, all of you. So let me share my presentation, okay? So, Viktora Vasimov Darayimovna, this is my sorry, full name, and I work right now at School Lyceum 101 after Brayal Tansarin in Karagande. And, okay, so next. So, here you can see lots of words connected to English. So, what kind of words can you see? Can you? Put them in the chat. At the end, I will tell you how I did this. This is after my professional development. After uh, Mr. August's uh, course, I learned how to do these kind of presentations. So let me see the chat. Yeah, resources, creating, literacy. Feedback, yes. Project resources, English. Mm -hmm. Professional development feedback. Okay, thank you guys. So this is all the vocabulary that is connected to our process of uh, teaching English, yeah? I've used this, I've known this after August's professional development course, which he held for us for Karagande teachers in November. This uh, website is called Wordle, wordle.net. And uh, you can use this kind of uh, resource to make uh, brainstorming at your lessons or at the beginning of the unit, yeah? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And the next is I'm going to present you, represent you American Teen Talk. This is my favorite one. I love it very much and my students love it too. So uh, here you can find uh, different dialogues between uh, teenagers aged uh, 14 and 18. And you can do, here you can see the link. You can, can you put the link to the chat, please? Oh, yes, Sam, I'll put mm -hmm. in there for you. So uh, after uh, that course, uh, as um, August said, before I didn't, uh, when August asked us American English, we thought that uh, he is talking about British English and American English. But then after the course, uh, we found out that there is a special website called American English. And here we find a very interesting and very productive resource called American Teen Talk. Yeah, here you can uh, download in PDF format and also you can use the audio of different teenagers talking about their day, their lifestyle and their interests. And I use it, it in this way. So the next slide is, for example, this one. Actually, we're, we're, we're not hearing the, uh, the sound. I'm hearing. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Can I maybe like this? Sorry for technical. Now, is it? Can you can you hear? Um, no, I, I I think it's playing. It looks like it's playing, but I, I still don't hear the sound. Um, when when are you enabling sound? Yes. How can I? Does anybody have any suggestions for troubleshooting? I don't know if, if sound is being enabled. Are you sharing the uh, application? Or are you uh, sharing your screen? Can you can you listen right now? 
No? I'm, so I'm not sure me, if the video is playing. Okay. So let me explain how uh, did I work with this kind of resource. So I've chosen Haley and Caroline. Caroline was 14 and Haley was 17. Uh, I've divided my uh, subgroup into two mini groups. Uh, the first group bought Caroline, the second group bought Haley, and uh, they have time to read and uh, work on the text. After they have read, they should ask to each other questions. So they work in pairs. For example, the first group member goes to the second group member and asks about Haley, and uh, uh, the second group member goes to the first group and asks questions. Yeah. So at the end, our aim was at the end of the lesson, we should make a Venn diagram uh, where we put, uh, for example, like in this picture, they should put uh, about Caroline information and Haley, and in the middle, they should put what is what do they have in common. And the last question was, what kind of uh, similarities and what kind of Opposites do you have with these American teenagers? So this is a great uh, discussion. Uh, even I uh, didn't expect my students to uh, be so encouraged because they were very glad uh, to see that American teenagers like uh, them uh, have problems with marks, getting marks, have problems with studying. And also they were uh, glad that uh, they are also uh, be motivated and be encouraged. And they said, ah, we are like American students because, you know, uh, they, uh, they are in this year age, Teenagers like to be someone, yeah? They want to show the, uh, they want to see the leaders, yeah? They want to look like them. So it was a great discussion. So, and I have also worked with my, uh, with my other students. Uh, it is uh, this uh, class has a uh, little bit problems with learning English because uh, they have some mm, lots of problems in learning English. So uh, they were also uh, glad uh, to read about uh, teenagers and they try it to do, to speak, and they try to share information about uh, Caroline and Haley. So what kind of activities can you do with this American teens talk? So you can listen because uh, the resource is provided with the audio. You can read, uh, you can uh, download or you can print in a PDF uh, format and you can discuss, give opinions, you can compare. Uh, you can use only one uh, teenager in one uh, lesson or you can uh, take two or three uh, teenagers' t personalities from this uh, resource because uh, the language of the resource, the language of this book is very easy to understand and it is authentic. So it's from life, I mean. So, and your students can ask and answer the questions. So this is about American Teens Talk. Guys, have you got any questions about the resource? Let me check the chat. Hey guys, feel free always, yeah, if, if participants, I know we have a huge group, so we can't really allow you guys to uh, speak because it, it, it might be so beautifully overwhelming. Um, so guys, but use the chat. Um, the speakers, while they're presenting, they'll be happy to address yes. those questions at the end of their presentations. Um, so that way we're not kind of interrupting uh, in the middle of each presentation. So they'll answer your questions at the end of each presentation. But please go ahead and put your questions okay. into the chat. So the next, the next is, uh, next uh, favorite one is uh, Forum Magazine. I've chosen, I found uh, vocabulary games more than just wordplay in the number, in volume 54, number four from 2016. So here uh, I found, and I'm using a game which is called Keep or Toss. 
So you can use this for every level of your students from the first grade to the 11th grade uh, students and to college or maybe university students. Uh, materials you need are minimum because you need just board or chalk or a whiteboard and the um, or pen and the paper. So here is the idea. So you can uh, draw the fridge, backpack and bean and explain that for fridge, you can put the words uh, that you need to keep, yeah? For the backpack, you should put the words that you need every day. For example, water, or you can use the unit you are going to teach or the unit you have taught. For the bean, you put the words that you don't know or you don't need or you don't use at all in your language. So this is a very great game because minimum resources uh, and uh, even and the low level student can do this and it works very great when you present when you present a new vocabulary like a uh, comprehensive of the new vocabulary lesson so i like it the forum magazines i use lots of games and lots of uh, materials from uh, this resource the next one is a, a sim. Uh, uh, a, uh -huh. Sorry to inter interrupt, a sim, but um, I, I think maybe possibly you're not moving your slides. I, I'm thinking now that you may have should be moving your slides when you're talking about forum. We're still on your old uh, with the videos from American uh -huh. Teens Talk. Okay, let me share again. Yeah, yeah. you just want maybe to share your screen directly. Yeah. Yeah, I I think that something happened with the internet yeah connection maybe slow connection okay you're, you're good now yeah yeah so oh no let's okay, we'll tr try again here Th third time's yeah. a charm we'll, we'll get it here all right So this is the resource I've told about the forum magazine, the game which I use every in my vocabulary lessons when I want to comprehend vocabulary. Yeah, can you see when you? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. we, we can see, but it's not in presentation uh, mode, but we can see the slides. So now is it okay? It's not. It's uh, not not full sc full screen, but uh, um, yeah. Just, okay. Yeah. I don't know why uh, I have problems, but let me continue. Yeah. So, is it okay? Uh, well, I mean, it's it's hard hard to see. Um, so that ways, yeah. If you click there and then, yeah, just go ahead and reshare just your screen. You're like your entire screen. And then do the slide presentation view. You can do from current slider from the beginning. Just try pressing F5. Just try pressing F5 then. Okay, now is it okay? Uh, no, it's 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 okay. You you can we can keep going here, Sam. Okay, just you're gonna just keep on going here. Yeah, finish up. Uh huh. So this is from Forum Magazine. So these are the resources I usually use, and it's very good when you are online. I hope, but uh, online is the past. So uh, these are the tips and uh, hacks that uh, helped me a lot during the online lessons these are the word wall and uh, the quizzes website which i also uh, knew after the august uh, professional development course uh, you can i use it you most for my sixth graders they uh, they are the great resources to okay and my it doesn't work here okay so and at the end of the of my presentation, I want to speak about open courses, which I've participated this winter. It's uh, called English for Media Literacy. 
why I chose uh, the one uh, which is called media literacy because uh, nowadays our students are very interested in using smartphones, yeah? So I wanted to know uh, how to use it effectively at my English lessons. And this uh, course helped me a great. So I ask you, I recommend you to go to the website and, uh, and now they are uh, open, open courses are open for everyone uh, to grow professionally. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I like the idea, sharing is caring. So thank you for your attention. Thank you for everyone. Sorry for my technical problems. That's, that's, that's all right, Sam. So thank you for sharing about American Teens Talk. Honestly, guys, this is probably my most favorite resource of them all. Uh, I'm not kidding you. You guys are going to be blown away with how just great this resource is and just how much like your learners are actually going to really embrace it and actually get interested, engaged with it. Give it a try, American Teens Talk. So we're going to go ahead and move on to our next invited co-speaker. Okay, it looks like here, uh, Samal, okay, so Samal's yeah, going to jump starting. in there. All right, so I was actually expecting somebody else, but hey, we, we can do this. Uh, we can do this. This is all right. So uh, my next invited co-speaker um, is actually one of my many talented um, master's degree program students at Eurasian National University. Um, uh, Samal is a first year master's student and she always has some of the most creative ideas. And so I invited her in to share some of her ideas with us. All right, Samal, it's gonna be all yours. Yeah, uh, so good day, dear participants of this workshop. My name is Samal and I'm the master students of two foreign languages at uh, Eurasian National University, as uh, Mr. August mentioned. And I'm in a service teacher at the one of the school in Astana here. And I'm also uh, international baccalaureate MYP projects coordinator in my institution. So today, um, sorry. So today I would love to uh, share with you, um, ju just a second. Okay, okay. So today I would like to share the resource which I found on AmericanEnglish.state.gov and uh, from the teacher's corner. And the name of this resource is Travel and Tourism. And I hope you can also um, utilize this activity in your teaching uh, practice. So let's get started. Um, here, the everything, um, the base uh, of the and the structure of this lesson and the activities are taken from the website. So I just modified some of the tasks, but the, everything uh, was taken from there. So uh, my goal, uh, not my, but the lesson's goal is uh, researching locations students would like to visit on a trip around the world and delivering a three minute presentation about around the world trip. And the language focus is speaking on, and reading and also the secondary focus goes on listening and a level uh, actually is up to you. It can be a start from the intermediate up to up intermediate. Um, it uh, um, depends on how you are going to organize the uh, lessons, lesson uh, content. Um, so before we start, I would like to ask you, uh, dear participants, and if you can uh, type your answers in the chat, I would love it. Uh, what is a Pecha Kucha presentation? Have you ever heard about that type of presentation? Or maybe you've experienced that type of uh, teaching, that type of activity with your school students? So if you know, you can give us a little definition of, of what is a Pecha Kucha presentation type of activity, or you may share um, your um, experience with your students who we'll love it. So let me uh, directly uh, start with the answering the question. So actually, the orig um, originally this Pecha Kucha presentation comes from Japan, and it is a presentation style where each presenter is allowed 20 slides, which are shown for 20 seconds each. And uh, the goal of this activity is to encourage the speaker to be concise and to not talk too long. But uh, during the hour lesson, 
uh, we are going to um, have six uh, give the task for the students for six slides shown for 30 seconds each and with each slide showcasing a place they would like to visit on a trip around the world Okay, so um, to begin the lesson, you can start with warm up activity. And here I have one uh, interesting application tool which will help you to make it more digital and interesting. So uh, students may come up to a whiteboard and choose the correct answer for a question. Here, you, if you uh, use your phones, you can scan this QR code. Uh, and also I'm going to show you how does this link works. Um, so it forwards you to this beautiful website where, um, okay, let me just move to the next one, uh, where uh, they show the, the map and the students need to guess uh, which country is this. So I guess that's going to be very interesting and you can uh, probably um, like have two or three minutes spending on time on this activity. So guys, do you have any ideas? What is the name of this country? Is it Egypt or the or one from uh, suggested ones? Zambia, maybe. Let's try. Let's see. No. Oh. Let's try the Mauritania. Yes, that's correct. And also uh, you have you may like to five or uh, three times uh, up to your lesson structure. And I'm sure the students are going to love it since they can boost their confidence and show how they know the geography well. And it's also um, the link to the uh, geography lesson, yeah? Okay, and uh, as a next um, activity also, uh, the teacher may write the word continent and ask the meaning of the word and the student may provide the students may provide the definition uh, or the teacher may give the definition. Yeah, it's up uh, to the level of the students. And the next, uh, the teacher should uh, put the question like, how many continents are they in the world? Um, and the students uh, will answer and it will direct them to the main thing of our lesson. And the next uh, activity which uh, was provided there is a think pair share activity, but I decided to modify it a little bit and to use a snowball think pair share activity. Here you see my group mates from the um, Eurasian National University doing this activity. Uh, um, the activity begins with the teacher asking which continent would you like to visit? And the students need to think or maybe make some notes. Then the students um, form pairs and, uh, oh, sorry, uh, the students for, uh, form pairs and share their answers with the partners. But instead of making the whole group um, discussion, the students come together for extended pairing. So if we started from two, two, then we go to two and four. Uh, and at the end, the, uh, the groups become the whole uh, one big group uh, sharing of ideas class, yeah? Okay, and um, to provide this activity here uh, for Pecha Kucha presentation, you can give the students the tips. Um, so you uh, need to um, inform them that they need to say their topic in one sentence because it's very important since they need to be very concise and straightforward. They need to keep slide text to a minimum, uh, like uh, they have to, uh, they have only 30 seconds, so uh, they have they need to put not a lot of a text, but more of the diagram, different visual interesting uh, pictures. So to make it more um, interesting and attractive for the audience. Uh, also, it is very important for students to practice their timing and they need to make sure that their speech is perfectly in line with the timing of the slides since these slides are going to move automatically. And uh, they need to give uh, themselves some visual uh, clues or cues so uh, they need to have like maybe um, visual organizers diagrams or pictures which will remind them what are they going to talk about in this presentation um, if we'll move to again to our lesson in the next 
um, stage, the teacher needs to uh, inform the class that this actual activity, when way, uh, where they present their presentations, is going to be their homework. So they need to plan uh, their and around the world trip at home. And um, they need to rehearse also at home. So uh, in class, you only just uh, make them familiar with the uh, tips, with the type of presentation, uh, with different continents and countries. Uh, then uh, the teacher should instruct the students that uh, their one location per con continent must be a city and uh, students must travel in one direction around the world, uh, either east or west. And the next step is um, students should create a presentation of six slides and um, the one slide per location must be, and they have only 30 seconds, if you remember. And the students will have three minutes to give their presentation to the class, and each slide will only be shown for 30 seconds. So we are teaching our students to develop their time management skill, which is very important nowadays. Uh, so this is just one example. So um, for a class presentation uh, on the day students give, uh, you need to give the students time to uh, rehearse and then maybe uh, to make last minute touch ups. And uh, the students are going to present in front of the class. It is very good if you have a timekeeper uh, among your students who are going to um, look that uh, is time frame is kept or not. Um, and of course, we, we are coming to the uh, most important stage yeah, part of our lesson, uh, which is providing uh, feedback. Uh, so while the students are presenting, what are other students are going to do? Of course, they are going to provide the feedback to each other because peer assessment, peer feedback is very crucial and very important for uh, the students. So for this case, I suggest you to use tag feedback. This uh, feedback for is one of my favorites, which I use a lot in my teaching practice. And uh, T stands for telling something you liked, A for asking questions, question, and G for giving a positive suggestion. So I uh, explain the students that they need to uh, keep this tag uh, feedback uh, suggestion form. And they, first of all, they need to start their feedback from uh, telling something they like. They may use these prompts like, I think your example was great. Um, they need to ask a question, maybe um, uh, spe specifically um, uh, connected to their presentation. And uh, at the end, of course, it is very important to end with a positive suggestion, giving them like um, the suggestion uh, which would they need to take into consideration next time, or maybe their uh, brilliant ideas concerning to this um, presentation of their classmate. Uh, so it's going to be lovely. If there's two or three students you can elicit, um, you can choose randomly uh, if they can provide such kind of feedback. So um, that's it from my side and I would love um, if I would love that if that information is going to be useful for you and you can use this in your teaching experience and I hope the students are going to love this activity and uh, it's going to be like one of your go-to activity or presentation type which you use on your lessons. So if you have any questions, uh, you're always welcome. Please uh, share some questions. You can type here in the chat box uh, and I'm ready here to help you. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Samal, for providing us uh, the resource from Teacher's Corner. Um, I know that there's been a lot of questions uh, in the chat too about it. Um, it seemed to be quite a new type of uh, idea for a lot of us, so that's fantastic. Um, they're asking for a PowerPoint, so if uh, the co-presenters, when you guys are done, if you can put, uh, share your uh, PowerPoint presentations, uh, attach the files into the Zoom chat uh, for our participants, that'd be great. And even just going beyond the resource that Samal showed, uh, the Teacher's Corner has so many great ideas where it's focuses on a topic and they share three, four, five different resources 
to go along with that topic. And there's just dozens and dozens of topics there, like what Small just showed us. Um, and that was just like one resource from just one of the topics. Yes. I mean, there's dozens of topics. There's more resources even within that topic, within the, uh, was it the travel and tourism one uh, that, that you were focused on? So guys, so check out the Teacher's <laughs> Corner in American English. I'm going to go and introduce the next uh, invited co-speaker. Uh, so the next invited co-speaker is another one of my talented students at Eurasian National University. She currently is a pre-service uh, English teacher, a second year student, uh, but super creative. Uh, Arna, it's going to be all yours. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Um, today, I would like you, um, I would want to talk about using songs to teach English. Um, so, Okay, so first of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Arna. I'm a second year undergraduate student at um, Eurasian National University. And uh, as Mr. August already said, I'm a pre-service English teacher at Binom School in Sultan. means I have a teaching practice there. Um, so first, let's start with uh, two questions. Um, the first one is for learners. So how often do you use songs to learn English? And the second one is how often do you use songs to teach English? And um, if you're already a teacher, so please um, um, provide the answers in the chat. Feel, feel free guys to use the chat. Uh, yeah. We're looking forward to see how do you guys use or how often do you use uh, songs? Okay, I see some answers already, always. Um, yes, yeah, so, I also like using songs often. Every lesson, songs are good to um, sing with preschoolers. Yeah, that's for sure. Often, okay. So it seems like um, like most of us use songs to teach and learn English. Um, so um, the next slide. Um, And before we start, I just want to mention that the presentation is based on the webinar, American English webinar, Using Songs to Teach English, the author of which is Kristen Lenz. Um, and now let's watch a video. Uh, so. You can uh, hear, right? Yes, we can hear, Arna, it's good. Okay, yeah, great. So let's continue. Catch fire, then I'll change my aim. Throw my troubles at the world again. Okay, let's go back to our presentation. So I think this video um, kind of shows how music can be impactful um, for students and the 
the classroom. <clears throat> so um, there were five ways to use music in the ESL classrooms that were mentioned by um, the author of the webinar. The first one is listening, which can be directed to practice listening, comprehension, and grammar. So um, the activity is transcribing a song. So the lesson plan is divide students into small groups. Each group is assigned to one verse. Each member of group listens to a song, writes what they hear, and compares with notes with other group members to create one version. One member of group writes it on board, and the class listens second or third time. Any music is noted by other groups are corrected and correct lyric sheet provided. So um, um, I just want to mention that you um, can always modify the activity. For example, um, my students, um, I gave them the task to just fill the blank spaces in the lyric sheet, or I printed the lyrics and cut the lines. Um, cut the lyrics and lines, and so they needed to put it in order. So just make sure you modify the task according to the level of your students. That's the most important part. And then speaking, which can be used to affirm students' interest through presenting about the favorite artist genre or piece of music. So she gave an example of Um Kultum, great Egyptian classical Arabic singer, um, and the lesson plan um, is as follows. So students prepare an oral report about their favorite music, genre, artist, or piece of music using a PowerPoint, a similar presentation format. They can include a brief MP3 or YouTube of the artist. A student presents, others fill out a feedback form. Teacher collects them, checks, and gives them to the presenter. So I think this is a great way to um, kind of know students' preferences in music, yeah? Um, then reading, uh, which can be, um, utilized to practice closed reading for inference. She provided an example uh, of her own song that she wrote herself called Farmer. And um, so create warm-up activity to conceptualize song, pre-teach focal vocabulary, and provide lyric sheet and play the song. Provide two kinds of questions, literal and inferential. So as the name suggests, literal questions are the questions and the answers to which can be found from line by line reading, yeah? And inferential questions are those that require thinking and analyzing. So um, students need to connect information in different locations of text uh, and make connections using their background knowledge. And I think this, uh, this activity is also great for developing students' um, critical thinking because you ask inferential questions. And the next is, of course, vocabulary. So she um, suggested to use um, songs to introduce the study of a topic. Uh, her example was bluegrass music. So um, it's great that um, it's great if you can find a song or music that um, kind of introduces the topic you're going to learn. So, for example, what I did with my students, um, I um, searched for um, songs that uh, are in accordance with the topic we're learning so um, that the vocabulary is like on that um, site yeah so and and the last one is writing uh, which can be directed to stimulate self-expression through art or creative writing to instrumental music um, uh, with her students she um, um, gave them to listen Bach's French suite number no. five, fourth movement, which was played by her mom. And, and so the lesson plan for this activity is provide nice writing instruments or art supplies in a variety of papers on the table. Okay, then invite students to express themselves in drawing, doodle, sketches, poetry, or writing as they listen to the piece that you will play. Tell how long the piece will last, give the name of the composer and the performer. After listening, give two, three minutes to complete the project and invite students to share their work and provide support as they share. Um, so this activity uh, is great of, um, to give students um, kind of opportunity to express themselves through art and, and also develop their um, uh, kind of creative um, site. Um, okay, so... Um, I conducted a survey um, at Binom School to um, just know 
um, how the students there feel about music and songs um, and also their preferences. So um, the respondents were Binom school students and there were um, overall 37 respondents. So let's see the results. The first question was, um, how often do you listen to English songs? And as you can see, more than 50% answered every day, then um, almost third said often. So as we can see, like the majority listens to English songs. And the next question was, do you want, um, would you like the teachers to use songs and music um, in classrooms? Um, and as you can see, almost 65% answered positively and almost third, um, more than third said, yeah, maybe, and only a small portion um, kind of said no. So as we can see, they are um, positively, um, so they want uh, songs to be used uh, in classrooms. Um, and the next question was, um, the goal of this question was to know the preferences of students. Uh, so what um, genre of music do you prefer the most? So more than uh, half, set pop, then we have jazz, uh, rock, country, uh, K-pop, uh, songs without uh, lyrics. So there were a bunch of different um, answers. So what I would suggest you um, also conduct a survey to know the tastes uh, of your students and then like um, plan the lessons in accordance with their answers. And, and the last question was to know their like, age range. So you can see they were all like young teenagers, 14, 16 years. And, and based on the survey, I um, created this table and um, age appropriate music suggestions and sources. So elementary school students um, who love listening to songs for kids. Um, and the suggestions are um, make sure the song has repetitive lines, easy words, and distinct pronunciation. And so you can find a bunch of uh, like song videos on YouTube. And then middle school students, and the appropriate music for them is um, like pop, rock, and other, uh, just um, depending on their preferences. And um, I think that songs from cartoons and series uh, would also be great. And, and here's a link to um, English ESL one wor uh, worksheets and that will be in the chat. So you can find a lot of different uh, worksheets there and make sure the song has topic related vocabulary and of course be careful of slurs. So, um, and uh, the last is high school students and the appropriate music uh, also depends on their tastes. Um, and um, I think uh, the song containing uh, slang or interesting phrases would be um, interesting for um, high school students. They always love it. So uh, that's all for my side. Thank you for your attention. All right. Th thank you, Arnaz. So thank you very much for uh, that presentation. I, I saw a lot of good responses in the chat, people making a lot of different suggestions, imagine dragons out there. So yeah, I mean, using songs is terrific. What, what I, what's really important, what I want all, all of our many wonderful participants to know is that, so before um, the uh, ASIM and Samal, you know, they were sharing um, specific resources within the AmericanEnglish.state.gov site. Now, or not, she actually just got through using one of the webinars that either that you can find through like the YouTube channel or that are streamed live through the American English for Educators Facebook page. And she basically borrowed the framework and ideas and concepts that were shared by that English language teaching professional from the United States in that webinar. And then she integrated and kind of put her own twist to it uh, here in Kazakhstan. So again, so there's resources on the website and there's also other professional development uh, resources for you that you can also borrow other resources and get ideas from. Um, so that's just just to let you guys know again. Uh, so thank you again Arna for that presentation. Um, we're going to go about 10 minutes over guys so we're going to probably take about another 10 uh, or 11 minutes and we're going to have our final co-speaker uh, present uh, the last 
co-speaker um, is another one of my many talented university students at Eurasian National University. Um, Dara is a second year uh, bachelor's degree student, um, group mate of Arna, so uh, yeah. they are group mates, uh, so they're here to support each other. Um, so but again, uh, please give a warm round of applause here uh, for Daria, it's all yours. Yeah. Okay, um, good evening everyone, it's my pleasure to meet you, and my presentation is about drama plays as a method of teaching English language. So let me uh, tell you a little bit about myself. So I'm 19, I'm a graduate of uh, Aviza Pedagogical College with a red diploma of preschool teacher. Uh, I'm also a second year undergraduate student of Kungjov Eurasian National University, and I'm currently pre-service English teacher at Binom School in Nur Sultan. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, okay. Um, so, uh, just okay so before uh, I start getting into my presentation I would like to tell you that my presentation is based on and inspired by this webinar uh, which is provided by American English and it's called task-based reading activities with authentic materials and skills and you can um, I highly recommend you to watch it it's actually very useful and interesting and now let's get into, so um, after watching this webinar, I thought, so how to make reading interesting. So it is actually uh, quite boring to some teenagers these days. And so I decided to make this survey. So the participants of the survey are the students of Binom School, uh, Oudala. Number of participants are 46 and age range starting from 12 to uh, 18. So here are the questions. So basically the main questions were, what problems do you face while reading in English? So most of them answered with that they don't, that, that they didn't understand most of the words uh, in texts. And also some of the texts were boring and they would keep getting distracted. And uh, other uh, questions were, how would you open? optimize the reading part of the English lesson. So, um, so I decided to brainstorm kind of uh, their ideas in this survey. So they answered with watching the videos, uh, making a scenes, and um, also like adding some um, adding some uh, pictures to the text. And the last question was, what modern uh, innovative methods of learning English do you know and would you like to see in English lessons? And they answered with watching, of course, the videos and with, uh, with like real life conversations in English. So as you can see from the results of the survey, most of the students would like to actually use the language, the real English, the real like everyday English language, not the ones in the books, but the real language, right? So, um, so I decided to uh, make a little research on uh, drama, on role playing. So there are a number of ways in which drama can be defined. It could be seen as a blanket term covering a wide range of oral activities that has that have an element of creativity present. In other words, drama is concerned with the world of let's pretend. It asks the learner to project himself imaginatively into another situation outside the classroom or into the skin persona of another person. So the students may do this on their own or with one or more fellow students. They may act either in a controlled way in accordance with organizational and linguistic guidelines established by the teacher, or they may be left fairly free to work matters out. In both cases, the students interact with other people and react to what they do and say, making use of their own personal store of language in order to communicate in a meaningful manner. So using a place um, can be uh, helpful to improve their reading and speaking skills, to encourage creativity, help them experiment with language, tone of voice, body language, and their own lines if they're involved in writing the play, uh, bring them out of themselves. Some students like performing or the script gives them confidence and involve the whole class. So how can drama uh, or dramatic activities 
can be used in ELT. So the first method is MIME. Uh, John Dougal defines MIME as nonverbal representation of an idea or story through gesture, bodily movement, and expression. MIME emphasizes the paralinguistic features of communication. It builds up the confidence of learners by encouraging them to get up and do things in front of one another. MIME helps develop students' powers of imagination and observation and can also be quite simply a source of great enjoyment with students uh, tending to be very enthusiastic about this aspect of trauma. The second method is simulation. Uh, it's an activity one uh, where the learners discuss a problem or perhaps a series of related problems within a defined setting. Simulation exercises can teach students how to function in a social situation with the appropriate social nice size. For example, students could practice how to turn down a request for a date. Another category of um, Using the simulation can be the uh, oriented task where they um, where they learn how to deal with um, like with real life problems like shopping, buying a ticket, and etc. The third, is, the third method is role playing. So role play normally involves students playing imaginary people in an imaginary situation. Open ended dialogues provide the frame for starting the role play with students free to decide how to develop dialogues further. Map dialogues uh, give gives students a sort of chart telling them which functions they must use when they're interacting by having the functional cues for each speaker on separate cards. Information gap is created. So here you can see the example of two friends. So for example, you have two students and you give one this the first card, the second uh, to the second student the second card. So they choose, for example, uh, the first student goes with invite the another student to go out with you. So the next student uh, declines, and then uh, the first student suggests another possibility. The second student accepts, and the, the last um, the last play here is to confirm arrangements, and the second student agrees. So here you can see the kind of the scheme for the uh, for the play for the scene. So they so they need to figure out how to play this out like. Um, at the place at the at the time where they're like uh, they, when they come out to the blackboard. And the fourth method of using uh, drama is exploiting a scripted play. In choosing a script, the teacher should ensure that the language is accessible to the learners and relevant to their needs and that the topic arouses the student's interest. Themes relating to family situations are therefore useful, whereas love scenes and nostalgic situations normally are not. So I actually had a chance to use these methods during the, during my um, lessons in Binom School. So here you can see the grade eight, uh, eight uh, students. So their English level is pre-intermediate. The source of the play is two minutes scene from a cartoon called Gravity Falls. So it's a pretty popular uh, American cartoon here in Kazakhstan. And the vocabulary is medium complexity. So before, uh, before giving them the scene, before showing them the scene, I made sure that the vocabulary is not too, like, too complicated. And I would rate the, the effectiveness of this method as eight out of 10, because so first I uh, let them watch the scene uh, in English, first with Russian subtitles and then in English with English subtitles. And then would, uh, they would divide in small groups. And then they would, uh, so I, I would give them the printed scripts, uh, printed scripts, yeah, of the scene. And they would prepare like for about 10 minutes and they would uh, like act out the scene uh, from a cartoon. So I decided to choose the cartoon because like, yeah, it's interesting and yeah, everyone like, so every student in this classroom like knew the cartoon and the characters and the plot. Yeah, so that was interesting. And basically the main, like the main advantage of this method is that they actually uh, had the chance to like, to hear, to listen to the native speech. And actually the scene had the like uh, the slang words, the real American English, the informal English. So I noticed that they're really like interested in in like um, in everyday English, in the like in real American English. Yeah, so they so they, they also constantly ask questions about like idioms, phrases, and slang words. Yeah, so they they just loved it. And other ways of using the plays can be creating one's own script, improvisation without a script, exploiting the course book for dramatic purposes. 
So in conclusion, why use drama and what are its advantages in ELT? Drama bridges the gap between course book dialogues and natural usage and can also help to bridge a similar gap between the classroom and real life situations by providing insights into how to handle tricky situations. Drama strengthens the bond between thought and expression in, in language, provides practice of super segmentals and paralanguage and offers good listening practice. If drama is considered as a teaching method in the sense of being part of the eclectic approach to language teaching, then it can become a main aid in the acquisition of communicative competence. Drama activities facilitate the type of language behavior that should lead to fluency. And if it is accepted that the learners want to learn the language in order to make themselves understood in the target language, then drama does indeed further this end. And that's all. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the chat, of course. Yeah, and that's it. All right. Well, th thank you, Dara, for uh, that great presentation showing us that twist, I know that was a terrific recent webinar uh, from the American English uh, Live um, Teacher Development Series 13. It was, it was talking about stations, which was really something that a lot of us maybe don't utilize a lot. And it was a great twist how you uh, kind of flip some of the information that was provided in there into um, role playing uh, through drum performance like that. So terrific ways. Again, one of my creative uh, students. So guys, so what we're gonna do now, because um, we're pretty much uh, out of time, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the QR code for the survey. And then the link is also gonna go ahead and go into the chat for the survey. Okay. All right, guys. So again, so everyone in attendance must complete this short survey. Uh, and this goes towards your certificate. And again, just uh, basic contact info is a little bit some feedback to help us with the uh, understand your experience. You can go ahead, if you have the functionality, you can scan the QR code on the screen to get access to that Google form survey or the link is in the chat. You can just click on that link to gain access to that one. Again, the link is in the chat for you to be able to access that survey, but it is a requirement and everybody does need to complete uh, that survey. I'll leave the survey open uh, for a little while, for a few hours so you guys can complete it because I know uh, for a lot of us, this is still in the holy month and I think some of us have uh, dinner and things to do uh, right now. Um, so I appreciate your patience. One last important thing though, is our family picture, which is our tradition always, here in our American Corner webinar series, guys. So go ahead, turn on your camera. Maybe you already were starting to prepare dinner, getting ready for that moment. If you're in the kitchen, flip on your camera. If you got your niece, your nephew, your son, your daughter, your cat, your dog in your lap, in your hands, that's okay. Because we're all one big happy family, the biggest family in Kazakhstan, the English teaching professional community. All right, guys. So, all right, can you go ahead and yeah. take a few screenshots for us? Yeah, sure. All right, everybody. So don't be so serious. Why? Because we love <laughs> what we do, right? It's Thursday oh, night, guys. Sorry. So get ready for those pictures. Okay. <laughs> Switch up your hands if you got to. All right. I don't know. <laughs> Heart. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we, we got like a couple hundred uh, <laughs> pages for our Zoom galleries here. All right. Okay. Cool. Okay, great. Thank you. You get some good ones there. All right, guys. So again, the survey link is in the chat. Next week, guys, is going to be the last webinar in the series. I got invited co-speakers coming from Pavlodar, Syram, Shimkent, Taraz, Semi, um, and they're going to be bringing us some great teaching practices to you guys representing Kazakhstan, English language teachers. We love what we do. Have a good night. Thank you again to all of my co-speakers. Thank you all of our participants. We love you guys. Join us again next week, same time, seven o'clock on Thursday. Don't forget to register. Have a good night, y'all. Take care. Thank you. Good evening. Bye everyone.